Well, this Saturday marked 250 years since the Boston Tea Party. That, of course, was when American co co colonists stuck it to the British <clears throat> by dumping 342 chests of tea right into the Baston Harbor to protest taxation without representation. That act of defiance helped kickstart the Revolutionary War and form the free and powerful country the United States is today. But the Washington Post appears to think the Americans were the bad guys. The paper asking in a recent column, was the Boston Tea Party an act of terrorism? It depends. A columnist writes, a horde of white men disguise themselves as Native Americans, coppering their faces and donning headdresses in the same tradition that would lead to black-faced minstrel shows decades later to commit seditious conspiracy and destroy private property. The riotous mob trespassed on three ships and destroyed goods worth nearly $2 million in today's money, all because they didn't want to obey a duly passed law. It was also criminal. A comparable event now might be classified as an act of terrorism. Bit over dramatic, huh, Bill? Yeah, well, wow. I guess my guess is the only reason you write that is because democracy dies in darkness. Um, I guess the only reason you write that is so folks like us talk about it. Right. I, I, right? A horde of white men disguise themselves as Native Americans donning headdresses. Um, <clears throat> I think you said it all. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? I would agree that this person sounds like uh, he, he's a writer on the crown. Mm -hmm. You know, this person sounds like a monarchist, that's, an avowed monarchist. I mean, good. where was that guy when King George needed him? Yeah, King George III I mean, is like, hey, man, on. Yeah. It's, where are my people at? Yeah, it's, but then the attempt to attach it to some racial arguments right. in the modern go. age, that's just dumb, and it's an insult. Uh, so, so you, but you see that linkage. It's got to. It's all got to make sense on what it is now. The arguments are to rile people up and to not like the country. Yeah, but everything is racist, Tommy. Everything right? is, and there is an entire genre to Bill's point of writers who write this kind of thing because it's sensational and because they can make some kind of an argument mm -hmm. about racism. No different than when they tried to malign that 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 young Chiefs fan for wearing the half red, half black. It's so that they can get attention and people can talk about their articles and they have to, of course, attach it to something that is racist because that also gets us talking about it. But this is nothing new. White founding fathers bad and they always like to, in some way, try to maybe tie this to January 6th in some ways. I'm surprised they didn't make that argument as well. But then this is the same outlet and likely the same kind of writer that would talk about the looting and the rioting of 2020 being social justice. So. They've tied themselves in a knot with their mental gymnastics, but it gets us talking about it and they get to write a sensational headline. Mm. And they feel good about themselves because they feel like they've done something without actually doing anything to better the lives of anyone. And that pretty, pretty much sums up modern day journalism. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. Like what worldview are they offering? What, what alternative are they offering? You know, Bill says democracy dies in darkness. That of course is the motto of the paper, but I would say that competence dies in ignorance. Yeah, and all of it dies in the light these days, and usually on social media mm -hmm. and in print, so we get to watch it. Um, yes, yes, and yes, and I would add that it is, it is really, really unhelpful <laughs> to write this kind of stuff right now. Great point. And to normalize what needed to happen to, to take us forward, because it makes it look like whatever is normalized about what's needed to take us farther forward, history will look back on and say, well, that guy was an idiot who wrote that article. Well, that would be fantastic, but I don't think it'll be seen that way. They're looking for new reasons to pump up the oppress, the victims of society that they deem victims, and go forward with that as our new normal. And I say no. I scream no into the darkness and no into the light. I don't want to go where these people are. You can't tie racism in this country back to whatever you think the origins were when we were becoming free from a nation that wanted to, to own us all. It's almost Not like, just the slaves. It's like a virtual tearing down of another statue, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, are yeah. Any more They're statues to doing go? Arlington, by the way. Oh, so yes. That's right, the Confederacy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The Boston Harbor still so, tastes like tea. And taxation is theft. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.